Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us today. So glad you're here. Um, I'm Lisa Levine with Dementia Alliance, and we're uh, happy to have all of you. It, we are getting started just a little bit late because we still have people calling in trying to join the session today. And we're so excited, it's so popular. So thank you all for that. We are thrilled to have Melanie Bunn back with us. And uh, for this Caring with Melanie series, we're gonna be talking about sort of different levels of dementia. So today is sort of the, the early or mild stages or levels of dementia. And uh, Melanie will explain what that means in just a minute, but I did want to thank you all for joining and uh, remind you all we are recording this and within a couple of days you will get a link to the recording so you can watch it again so anything that we share here you will get later on in an email from me um, we have a few sponsors that have helped us make today possible ESI is one of those, Aware Senior Care, and a new sponsor, Capital Financial Solutions. So we do want to thank our sponsors for, for helping us put this on and bringing Melanie Bunn, our, our um, very trusted expert in dementia, joining us today. So um, without further ado, uh, it's 12.03. want to go ahead and jump in. I know we have a lot of content. I do ask that you stay muted unless Melanie asks you to unmute um, that because we are, are a lot of us on here and we want to be able to hear each other. Uh, so thank you all again for joining us and Melanie I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to you. Thanks Lisa and, and I am really glad. Um, to be with you. Uh, I can't think of um, anybody, I would any group I would rather be with on September the 1st, which, you know, just throwing it in there. My birthday is this month, it's September 6th, just to mention so nobody forgets, um, because that's what's on my mind today. But I'm really glad that you're here with things on your mind that have to do with more than my birthday. So I would love to see who I'm talking to because right now I can see, ooh, two, four, six. Thank you for sharing, um, Holly. I can see six or eight people, but I would love to see the rest of your faces. I say sometimes that if you if you share your, um, your video, it's okay if you don't share your video if you're in the bathroom or if you're naked. And so if you're not sharing your video, I'm gonna think you're in the bathroom or you're naked. So I, I don't wanna think that about Bridget, but you know, or Jody. Um, so Stephanie is saying, I am not naked. So that Chuck isn't naked. So um, it, it's good to know that there are at least a couple more people who aren't naked. And the rest of y'all, we just don't want to know. So thanks, <laughs> Melissa's not naked. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> So yay. So sometimes people are, there are other reasons. Sometimes people aren't sharing their screens because they're eating or something like that. Or, you know, some people, various reasons, but if you can share your screen, it makes it so much more fun. So we are talking about kind of the early and the, the kind of the mild stages of dementia. Now that's a really hard term from my perspective because, um, I'll give you an example. Um, I have a family member who had back, uh, had problems with their back and had the cement thing done to her back. And, and so she kept calling that surgery, surgery, surgery. And I kept saying procedure, procedure, procedure. And I finally realized when you're, something's happening to my back, it would be surgery. Something happening to her back, we can call it a procedure. So it's kind of like, is it mild dementia? Probably not if it's something that you're dealing with personally or something that your family is dealing with. It doesn't feel very mild at all, but that's what we're here for is to kind of talk about when things are starting to change. So I'm gonna ask you um, to drop into the chat. What were some of the first things you noticed in your person living with dementia or what were some of the first things 
you notice um, in the clients that you work with, the, the people that you work with? What were some of the first things that you noticed um, that made you get a little bit suspicious that something might, this is not, this is not right. This is, this is not normal. Um, and I'll share with you um, the first one for, I noticed with someone, we noticed it probably about 15 years, 20 years maybe even, um, before she started showing real symptoms. And what happened was family were together at McDonald's. It was convenient, it was easy. And so this was a grandmother and at the end of the meal, the grandmother got up and walked to the counter and bought herself an ice cream cone and came and sat back down and ate the ice cream cone. Now drop in the chat or you can unmute and say it out loud if you want to, what's wrong with grandma going and buying herself an ice cream cone and coming and sitting down and eating the ice cream cone? What's wrong with that, with that picture? Or what's wrong with that situation? So you can either unmute and say it, or you can just drop it in the chat. What was wrong with that grandmother? Or what? why was that wrong? Why was that wrong? She's a diabetic. Okay, so diabetic is a good answer, but but not the one I was looking for. And Alicia's going, just ate an ice cream cone. What in the world is wrong with eating an ice cream cone? But I was you something- ask the family if they wanted one too. Ooh. Everybody didn't do it together. Ooh, that- Plus you didn't do it ahead of time, like when you order? Well, you always order your ice cream last because you don't want it to melt. So that was actually the right thing about it. But Melissa had it. She didn't ask the grandchildren if they wanted an ice cream cup. And would most grandmothers mm. tend to make sure the grand and, and Alicia's going, oh, and Holly's going, yeah. So that doesn't seem like a big deal when you think about it. But when you start thinking about it in context and situation, it began to become something that later on we kind of looked back. Um, so let's, let's um, look at what some of the things that were put into the chat. Um, Sherry put on the care, um, confusion and forgetfulness and misplacing things. And I might say to that, well, everybody forget, oh, we're gonna talk about why that's different in just a minute. Memory problems and putting things in strange or different places, short-term memory, finishing thoughts and a sen sentence, word finding problems from an attorney and a poet. Yeah, that's put repeating stories, um, more forgetful, um, putting underwear in the linen closet. Yeah, and that's not typically where most people keep their, their underwear is in the linen closet, looking back through to see some more things. Um, things that took a wrong turn and then mm, it's not just taking a wrong turn, it's not really realizing it. Sense of direction kinds of things, problems with planning and organizing. Oh, I, you know, there are many things I have seen. I have never seen hot dogs in the silverware drawer, but, but I can kind of, of, of see that kind of happening maybe, but those are exactly the kinds of things that we're looking for. We're looking for things that are, first of all, different from usual for this specific person. Now, some of y'all who've known me for a while know that I've got no sense of direction. And do you think GPS, show me thumbs up or thumbs down. Do you think using GPS has made that better or worse? My ability, yeah, my sense of direction has gotten worse. I get lost less because I don't argue with my GPS. I just go wherever it sends me. Um, but I don't have, I still, I'm lost always and forever. I can go places over and over again. I don't have dementia. So you kind of have to start with knowing what is 
right for this person? What is usual for this person? And then I start looking for variations on that. Somebody put in there, not paying bills. Not paying bills is a real, uh, and a lot of times it is money. A lot of times it is managing finances are those early things we start to notice for someone who has always done that. So we notice that when I am the person who has always paid the bills and now things are starting to slide around a little bit, it becomes a problem. But if my husband always paid the bills and he died a few months ago and I can't figure out how to do that, that's a completely different situation, completely different process. Um, somebody else put in their paranoid behavior. Um, so I, I'm guessing, Nancy, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Dana, can you unmute and tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that? Can, are you, do you have the ability to unmute and tell me a little bit more? Because that could mean a lot of different things. Or maybe, maybe Dana can write a few more comments in the... Um, in the chat about that, because that could mean everything from um, some really common kinds of things where, so Lisa is my daughter. So Lisa, can you unmute for a minute and be my daughter? Hey, mom. Well, I need to talk to you about something. Okay, what's going on? Well, where did you put my medication the last time you were here? Um, on the kitchen counter where you usually keep it? Well, it is not there. I went in there and it, I think people are sneaking into my house. Oh, well, mom, I don't think, I don't think well, so. I, if you put it on the, and I have no reason to believe that you're lying to me. You've not lied to me much in the past. Oh, ma'am, I don't lie to you. Well, you did when you were younger. Well, maybe yeah. when I was a teenager, but yeah, you did. Since. But, but you have it hadn't been so much of a problem recently. Yes, ma'am. If, if you tell me you put it on the counter and I always leave it on the counter, the only thing I know of is somebody's been coming in here and and move, you know where I found it the other day? Where? In the linen closet with the underwear. Well. <laughs> So we'll time it out. So, um, so thanks, Lisa. Wonderful job. I made Alicia laugh again. I made Karen, whoever's in Karen's thing smile. Um, so is, and, and Dana said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So those kinds of, I, that's just a lot of trying to make the world make sense. Because if I see myself as a person who, and, and fill, in, fill in the blank with whatever. I am a person who pays my bills on time. I am a person who um, is careful with my money. I am a person who always washes the dishes before I go to bed at night. I am a person who would never say anything disrespectful or rude or insulting to anybody to their face. I am a person who dementia changes that. And so dementia changes what I do, but often it doesn't sit, change who I see myself as. So if I see myself as a person who is very organized and Lisa's kind of dodge and she's waiting, waiting for um, the lightning to strike me. <laughs> even though she's miles away on the other side of Raleigh, um, you know, I still see myself as a person who is organized, but dementia won't let me be that person who is organized. So think about it for a minute. I am a person who sees myself as being organized. Dementia isn't letting me be organized. Who does Lisa, and I'm gonna ask Lisa to unmute for me again. Who does Lisa need to inter think about when she's interacting with me? Does she need to interact with me as someone who is who sees herself as being organized 
or does she need to interact with me as the reality of the situation, which is I can't keep up with squat. So show me if you think Lisa should interact with me based on how I see myself, which is going to be more likely to keep Lisa out of trouble. If she interacts with me in a way that treats me the way I see myself, or if she tries to fix that, which I gave you a hint, right? <laughs> so everybody put your thumbs up. So Lisa's going to interact with me in the way that I see myself. Well, Lisa, sweetheart, well, it seems like I, I, everything is just getting, it's nothing, it's where it's supposed to be. And, and I know that frustrates you, mom, because you are so organized. Well, I have, I, we didn't have much. Yeah. But what we had, I tried to, 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 to do, do, do with the, the way it ought to be. And now you did. You, it's, huh? You did. You always had things orderly and where they should be. Mm hmm. And now I can't find squat. And, and it sounds like you're frustrated. Well, wouldn't you be? I would be if I couldn't find things. Well, I needed. you wouldn't be because you've never been able to keep up with your tail between your legs. Well, that might be true, too. Well, well, you've never. But for somebody like me, it is. OK, so I'm going to pause right there because now I've got the group that's with Karen and I forget from another time what names are. And I apologize for that. So I showed you a couple of things in that little interaction that kind of give you some thoughts that something is not working well in my brain. So just drop in the chat or unmute. Um, what are some of the things that you notice in just that little one minute interaction with Lisa that let you know that things aren't going well in my brain? I think one is that you said a lot of things seem to go missing. Okay, so it's not just a thing. It's not just the medications. It's that a lot of things in my life aren't working. So what happened is I have an old pattern of always keeping my medicines on the dining room table, but put your hand up and go, but, but things aren't off. So I take the important special things and I put them where somewhere the place you put things where you're never going to find them again, I put them somewhere safe. That's where things go to never be found again. So I put them somewhere safe. Now I can't find them because when I go to look for them, I can't remember, and somebody wrote this, I can't remember the now of where I put them. I remember the past of where I put them. So now when I go there and they aren't there, I take what's left in my brain. Do this with me. All of the things that are left in my brain and I take all of those things and I try to come up with an explanation for why my stuff isn't where it's supposed to be. But what's the problem? I'm, I'm making a decision on faulty information. So I was trying to pull up directions from where I'm supposed to be next. And the first time I pulled up the directions where I'm supposed to be in Durham, it told me it was going to take me, just pulling it up again, because you won't believe it. It told me it was going to take me 20 hours and four minutes to get there. So does anybody think it should take me 20 hours and four minutes to get from Raleigh to Durham? Not even with traffic, right? What I did is the first thing that came up on Rigsby Avenue came up in San Antonio, Texas. Do you know how long it takes you to get to San Antonio, Texas from Raleigh, North Carolina? Apparently 20 hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> so my brain was, my brain knew 
ding, 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 that's wrong. The challenge for people living with early dementia is they can grab onto pieces of things. I can grab onto Rigsby Avenue, miss the Durham part and wound up thinking, well, I'm gonna be late because I'm supposed to be there at two. Doing the best that I can to take things and put them together and try to come to understanding. Because part of the challenge, I think, with this early dementia part is there is so much that's still working, but we only pay attention to what? Do we pay attention to what's working or do we pay attention to what's, what's gone, what's lost? And so if I'm only paying attention to what's lost, then I lose all of this potential for understanding what's really there, what really makes sense, what's really connecting and what's really working. So that's a little bit about those kinds of things. I saw um, lots of things in here that people were responding. People were agreeing of, of paying attention to um, the person you think you are. Somebody said word finding problems when I was talking to Lisa. I had some trouble getting out some of my words. The, 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 you, the, you know where I always put them in, in that, that place. And, and now Lisa, you know, it's right there in front of the, the one that you look through. The window? Yes. It's right there, and I always do it that way. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see my, my words are getting kind of vague. I'm kind of doing some substitution kind of stuff. And I said something really odd about Lisa putting her tail between her legs. Do you remember that? what that was, Lisa? I think you were trying to tell me that I was disorganized. Yes, I said something about you couldn't find your tail between your legs or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, is, has anybody ever heard that expression used that way? I really hope not because it doesn't make any sense. No. It's kind of putting together a couple of different phrases, you know, put your, your head between, I mean, there's all kinds of kind of layered in things, but that's not really what I was trying to say or what I wanted to say. But am I, could I say enough to Lisa, could I get enough out that she could really understand what I was trying to say? Could I, Lisa? Now, Lisa is particularly skilled at this. And Lisa is particularly skilled with this because she has a lot of experience with people living with dementia. And because, so what, why else are you particularly skilled with this, Lisa? because I'm going through it personally. Um, so I am I both have it at work and at home. So you have it at work and you've got it in your life. And so it's a double whammy. Lots of practice. Yeah. Is it easier practicing with people who are part of your professional life or part of people who are in your family life? It's easier practicing with people who are in my professional life who I'm not related to. Ooh, and why do you think that might be? Because there's all kinds of past with the people I'm related to. <laughs> so everybody just go ahead and do this with me. Just do a, if you've got teenagers in your life or if you've had teenagers in your life ever in your life or if you ever were a teenager, just kind of do this, just kind of cross your arms across your chest and just kind of take a big sigh and roll your eyes up. <sighs> and then shake your head and just go ahead and get that out of your system. Because Lisa, was that kind of what you wanted to do to me as your mom? Yes. A little bit? Here, mm -hmm. Oh gosh, mom, here we go again. Mm -hmm. I, I have not stolen your gowns. I promise I did not steal your gowns, mom. I, I really don't wear flannel gowns in August in North Carolina. I, I promise I don't have them. 
and and I don't wear gowns and I wouldn't wear flannel. Yeah, it just kind of gets. Take this part, put your hand right here. This is your logic and reason. And this is how I deal with Lisa when we're colleagues and friends is logically and reasonably. Now do this. This is how I often will start to deal with Lisa as my daughter. And this is that amygdala. That is where the emotions and the stress and the distress comes from. Did anybody else notice anything about me when I was being Lisa's mother? Anybody else want to unmute and say something or drop something in the chat? Somebody said they don't put things back where they be long and and maybe it's because they can't figure out remember where things used to be and how things used to be especially if that's not something that was really part of their life but often it's because those things don't feel safe in those familiar places or because they just start they i go to i've got underwear in my hands and I'm going to put them away. So I open the closet, but it actually turns out to be the linen closet. I open the closet and when I open the closet, I see other white things in there or I see something that doesn't belong. So I put the underwear down and, and I grab the loaf of bread and I go to take the loaf of bread to the kitchen. Now, before I get to the kitchen, I walk past the bathroom and I stop to brush my teeth. So I put the bread down and I brush my teeth. And then when I leave the kitchen, leave the bathroom, now where is the bread? It's still in the bathroom. So now we've got the underwear in with the towels and we've got the bread in the bathroom. And you walk in and you go, this doesn't make sense and you know what take a deep breath turn around everybody turn around kind of turn your back not all the way around but kind of turn your back like this and i'm going to pat you on the back and i'm going to say you are absolutely right you are absolutely right the bread should not be in the bathroom you are absolutely right the underwear should not be in with the towels you are absolutely right and it doesn't matter because what does matter is the relationship and the connection because Lisa, if, if she's gonna, con I need Lisa as my daughter desperately. I need to feel safe and connected with her and who gets to make the changes that will help me feel safe and connected with her. Am I going to be able to do that? Or is Lisa going to be able to? Yeah, Lisa's going, yep, that's my job. Sign me up. Now, somebody kind of noticed that I, I got really irritable and really impatient really, really quickly. Do you think when Lisa was a little girl, and I just cannot tell you, she was the best little girl you would ever, ever, ever dream of. She never caused me a bit of trouble. She was always sweet. She always got her homework done. Never had a bit of trouble with Lisa. She was wonderful. Always was easy to get along with. Never had a bit of trouble with her. Do you think when Lisa was a little girl, when she moved my stuff around, do you think I immediately got really impatient and irritable with her? Or do you think I, I taught her and explained to her and tried to help her understand what was going on? So show me thumbs up if you think I was a patient mom or thumbs down to show me if you think I've always been a little edgy. You think I've always been a little edgy? Some of y'all think I've always been a little edgy and maybe I was, but often what happens is people The kinds of things they didn't express, like I, little girl, really sweet daughter, probably was a lot more patient with her then than I am now. 
dementia starts to bring things out. This part of my brain that does my impulse control isn't connecting as well. So I have to let go. So Lisa has to let go of some of those hurtful things I might say to her now that I probably didn't say to her when she was little. Now, somebody Karen put, oh, it's hard to bite your tongue. Let's see what else. Confrontational somebody put there. Tone of voice and rhythm of speech is definitely different. It could be hurtful to Lisa and it's so hard to let go of that. And put your hand right here, heart things. Put your hand right here, head things. And these two things often don't line up in the same way because the heart things for Lisa are telling her, Lisa, what is your heart telling you in the situation with me as your mom? What is your heart telling you? My heart is telling me that I'm a little bit worried because you've always been so organized and it seems like you're starting to struggle with that some now. So Lisa's heart is kind of worried about me a little bit. Lisa's heart might be a little hurt because of some of the impatience and some of the things I say and do. Lisa's heart might be feeling a little wronged. You know, I would, I, I would never take your medications. Why would I take your medications? Why would I take your money? Why would I do any of these things? Why would I hire people to help you who might take your stuff? So Lisa's starting to feel some of those kinds of things. But what is Lisa's head telling her? Lisa's head is telling her, mom is doing the best she can. So your head is telling you she's doing the best she can. Your heart is telling you, but it still really hurts. Take a deep breath and let it go because using this well means taking care of this because if you don't take care of your heart and your feelings it's going to start coming out no matter how much your head understands so i've been talking for 35 minutes i haven't shown a single powerpoint can you believe it lisa that's one of the signs of the coming of the end of time i do have a powerpoint i want i've got a couple i'll send them to lisa lisa will send them to you there is a reason why you don't get your PowerPoints ahead of time. And the reason why you don't get your PowerPoints ahead of time is I never know where exactly we're going to wind up, but I can show you where I thought we might wind up. And let's see if we're getting to some of those places. So here is a little bit that, um, that we have. I wanted to talk for a minute about, is it dementia or is it something else? So, We've already started kind of talking about that. We've talked about if I'm a person who's always had a good sense of direction, then you're going to get worried if I'm starting to get lost. If I'm a person who's always managed the money, you're going to get worried. If I've been a person who's always kind of said little snippy, little off the cuff things, not so much a worry. If I've always been someone who's been very aware of other people's feelings and relationships, you're going to be a little worried. So these are some of the questions we're going to start with. We're then going to follow up with getting a head to toe inside and out evaluation. Now, everybody might not need all of these things. Not everybody might need to go to see a cardiologist. Not everybody might need um, an echo or an ECG. Not everybody might need all of these things. Um, everybody's probably going to need all of the things on the left side. Not everybody might need all of those things on the right side. It's going to kind of depend, but um, we need to consider these kinds of things because it might be normal. If I've always been a little loosely wired, me losing a bunch of stuff is just kind of baseline for me. If I've always been a really structured person, you're going to want to pay attention. It might be a delirium, and that's something that's temporary and sudden that we're going to manage in a little bit different kind of way. It might be depression, or it might be something else. So we don't want to just put a label on something until we really find out what it really might actually wind up being. 
So I put a little bit of work into this. And the reason I put a little bit of work into this is we, we sometimes talk about dementia like it's all the same thing. Or we sometimes talk about dementia like it's all Alzheimer's disease. But the reality is, and maybe I'll remember to put that slide in here. The reality is that dementia is an umbrella term. It means it's a category of diseases and underneath that umbrella term are lots of different types. So the kinds of things that y'all were talking about, we talked about early signs like not remembering important things or struggling with remembering unimportant things more frequently um repeating stories and repeating conversations and repeating information getting lost or turned around or confused with travel trouble with money trouble with decisions personality changes either being more impulsive saying things doing things more or being more withdrawn trouble finding words using the wrong words losing um abstractions which might include things like um humor or um slang or abbreviation kinds of things those are what i look for with alzheimer's i'm often going to see those same kinds of things in people with other dementias so those kinds of things and or for vascular dementia those folks often come to the table with some other health problems like high blood pressure or diabetes or heart disease. Kind of the differences with those people is it seems like sometimes the person can do things and then sometimes they can't. So maybe one day the person's got lots of energy and they remember things and the next day the person can't remember things and, and their energy is squat. So for, for vascular dementia, there are lots of fluctuations in not just memory, but language and energy. The other thing with vascular dementia is really severe, significant mood swings. So going from, oh, Lisa, it's so good to see you. You look so beautiful with those headphones on. Why are you wearing the headphones? And it's just like roller coaster kind of emotions um, to trouble with kind of the parts of the brain that does this kind of stuff like concentrating and planning and making decisions and just kind of being people describe it as sluggish my thinking is sluggish my thinking is slowing or i i can i can watch my mom and i can see her thinking and figuring things out whereas before things would just happen um, a little bit different with Lewy body dementia. With Lewy body dementia, a lot of times people will notice things early on like changes in sleep, like nightmares or lots of movement at night with problems with vision. It might even be anything from hallucinations, which are often visual for people with Lewy body, to things like um, having trouble really with acuity of seeing, especially like when it's getting dusky or dawn or when I'm going from light to dark, I can't kind of like, you know, when you used to walk out of a movie theater, it would be wide open in the middle of the day and it's kind of like, I can't see that kind of having trouble with adjusting vision to problems with mobility, which might include things like tremors or rigidity or might even be people falling and, and they often don't just drop. Um, they often like fall down steps or, or really big kind of significant falls often to problems with memory or concentration. I had a guy with Louis body tell me, my memory is like a bouncing ball. Sometimes I can catch it and sometimes I can't. Then the other type of dementia I had space on my PowerPoint for, there are whole bunches of different types of dementia. But the other one that I put on here was frontotemporal lobe dementia, which is um, 
often this part of the brain, so it, it often is either not having, not caring about things, not being involved, connected, engaged with things to really being very disinhibited. So maybe people eat everything in the kitchen or maybe they drive really, really fast or maybe they, um, I'm, I'm tired of these clothes so I throw everything away. Uh, so those kinds of problems with, with typically this part of our brain would say, don't throw everything away, you know, keep something to wear to the store to buy new stuff, but I can't go to the store. So I've got to buy everything online because I've thrown everything away to some problems with vision, to some problems with, I don't think it's my problem or I don't think it's a problem. So yes, I'm in jail, but that ha crap happens. It's, it's Wednesday. Um, so those kinds of early kinds of signs. So you might look at some of these and you might say for somebody who's in their 50s, that person's going through midlife crisis when it might actually be frontotemporal lobe dementia. You might look at somebody and say, well, you know, it looks like mom has Parkinson's disease when it's really a lot different and a lot more than that. So we've got to start paying attention, not just to those classic kinds of signs. Now I put this up here. Now these are actually Alzheimer's brains and we're going to be looking at this in the next couple of, of programs as well, looking at different parts of it. These are PET scans. And when I look at PET scans, what I'm looking at is a lot about the color because what I'm really noticing is red is where the brain is getting lots of fuel and a lot of work is happening. It's not just getting fuel, it's burning fuel. So red is where glucose is being metabolized, work is happening. And all the way down to this purple, which is fluid, which is normal. So these two brains are normal. And these two brains, this is these brains specifically are Alzheimer's brains. These two brains are Alzheimer's. Now this is the same person. This is kind of a, a going through the brain like this. This bottom one is kind of going through the brain at more of an angle. But if you just compare normal and early Alzheimer's, what are you noticing about how much work is happening? Just really, really early. These might be people who are still driving their cars. These might be people who are still managing their medications and managing their money. These might be people who are still doing most of the things. Lisa showed me a thumbs down. And, and is that what you're seeing from other folks in the group as well, Lisa? Or thumbs down? Are you seeing anything in the chat? Is there, what are you noticing or happening with the, the, the red and the working areas in these two brains? Are, you, are people writing some things if you compare this normal? Um, less working, less work happening, more dark parts or purple parts, less color. So less, less red and more resting. So less of those hot colors and more of those cooler colors. And that means the brain is not working as hot. So I wanna point out a couple of things. Right here, this arc, this red arc, this is that logic and reason part of the brain. This is the ability to understand the situation and kind of come to a logical decision about it. So what do you notice is different between this part of the brain and this part of the brain. What do you notice is particularly happening there a lot. And Lisa, if you see some things coming up in the chat, I can't see the chat right now. Okay. It does say the working areas are less obvious in the Alzheimer's brain. So there's a lot less work. So what do you think, who is gonna be more likely to be able to be logical and reasonable? The normal person or the Alzheimer's, early Alzheimer's person? I'm hoping everybody is saying the normal person. So who is likely to be able to see it from somebody else's perspective? The normal person or the early Alzheimer's person? So this is particularly important because 
the kinds of conversations we're having now are, dad, I don't think it's safe for you to drive. And that is coming from logic and reason, but how is dad going to understand it? Is dad understanding it as logic and reason or is dad understanding it? Look close, I'm going to show you some other parts of the brain down here. This is that danger zone. This is the amygdala that says this is risky, this is dangerous. So this is the person living with early Alzheimer's and this is the person who's normal. So this person is looking at the situation through logic and reason and the person with Alzheimer's is looking at this decision from what? Threat. This is a threat. You are taking away my manhood. It's because now it doesn't, it doesn't become the keys. It becomes my manhood. You are taking away my rights as a human being. You are taking away my adulthood. You are taking away my independence. You are taking, you are taking away. Conversation about driving. Conversation about, you know, let's get somebody in to help. Care partner, logical and reasonable says, life is complicated, you need help. The person living with dementia doesn't respond to logical and reason, they respond to what? This is a threat. You are taking away my independence. You're taking away my autonomy. You are doing this. So take a deep breath and let it go because one of the biggest challenges that we deal with in these early changes, this mild dementia is expecting this person to act like this person. So we want to be able to explain and to have conversations and to make a decision but it really just doesn't work that way anymore because this is the memory part up here and that's really not working. This is the language part over here and those parts aren't really working. And, and so things aren't connecting. What used to work isn't working anymore the way it used to work. So in this situation, we're the ones who've got to change. So I've got some communication strategies that will be there and it's things like support and validate. You heard Lisa doing some of those. You were so frustrated. She, I'm so sorry. I know this is really hard. I know you've always been organized. You've always kept up with things and it's so frustrating that things aren't where they're supposed to be. I am so sorry. I know that takes so much energy. So she might give me some hints or some choices. She might say, so mom, the, me the medications are not where they're supposed to be. Um, do you, can I come over and, and help look around and see what we can figure out? Or, or do you wanna work on it some more and I'll come over tomorrow? So did Lisa say, do you want me to come over and find them again? Like I have four times this week already? Or does Lisa want, Lisa does want to say that, but Lisa's not going to say that. Lisa wants to say, I'll bring over the other set that I ordered ahead of time because I, you're losing them all the time. Lisa wants to say, I will just keep up with the medication because it's obvious you can't do it. Lisa wants to say, Lisa's not going to say any of those things because Lisa wants to keep us connected. And so she's putting her hands over her mouth and she's going, she's biting her lips and she's taking some deep breaths and she's saying, oh, mom, I'm sorry, I've got another call coming in. And she hangs up and she goes, calls her sister and says, Lord, you will not believe what she said today. Guess what she lost for the 19th time this month. And we also want to start thinking about discussions about now and in the future. Because what we really wanna figure out is what 
is going to happen next. Now, Lisa's going to talk to me about, Mom, what you spend a lot of time in your kitchen. What is it that, I, and I know you don't cook, and I know you're a terrible cook. So why is it if you're a terrible cook and you don't like to cook, why do you spend so much time in your kitchen? So ask me that question, Lisa. I won't be offended that you tell me I'm a terrible cook. Mom, we all know that you're a terrible cook. You've even joked about that with us before. You try, you do. None of us starved, but, but I noticed that you spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Uh, why, why is that? Well, I've got these big windows in the kitchen. Mm. And, and even when it's, it's not good outside, if mm. there's any at all, it's going to be there. Oh, okay. So you like to look out the window. I do. And, and I like the, the, not just that kind that's got all the, you know, all the stuff, but I, I like the, the kind that's from the outside. The sunshine. I, I always have. Yeah, and sitting you... right here, even if it's, if it's cold, when you've got some of, it, it just, it just makes you feel warm. The so daylight now, makes you feel warm. So now Lisa, nice reflection, Lisa. Um, so now Lisa knows something that's important to me about if it gets to the point, she's, she's not going to tell me, Lisa isn't going to tell me, well, we'll never make you move out of your house. You can live there the rest of your life because Lisa can't see into the future. Lisa doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow, much less 10 or 20 years down the road. But now what does Lisa know that's really, really important for me to be happy and you can just drop it in the chat. What do you know, what does Lisa now know about me that's important for me to be happy? This is not exactly about that, Melanie, but Anna wrote, thank goodness for my sister's sounding board. <laughs> So she's got, she, Lisa knows she can't do this by herself. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Dana wrote windows, um, being able to look out and be in the sun to enjoy outside in the sunshine. Yeah. So you may not, I may not be able to live in this house and this kitchen for the rest of my life, but it will be important to know I can see the sunshine for the rest of my life. So we're going to start having conversations about that. We're going to Go ahead and start managing early on. People can still say, I want this person to be my power of attorney. I'm going to make this change to my will. Early on, people can still do those kinds of things. And we should do those kinds of things. We want to get copies of everything. We, If I love this particular white bottle, at, because all those big ones don't fit in my hand and the white one I can find, she better make friends with somebody who works at Intuitive and get a whole bunch more of these white bottles like this because I'm going to need these the rest of my life. Get copies of everything and duplicates of my favorite purse. And then also begin to really explore the past because the more you can learn about who I am and who I've been, the better you're going to be able to connect and understand me when I can't represent myself that way. So if I start saying, well, I'm so worried about Dixie. I, I haven't seen her in, in forever. Lisa, do you know where she is? No, I don't know where she is right now, but it sure sounds like you miss her. I do. I, she's usually running around here somewhere. Now, does Lisa know, do you know who, who Dixie is, Lisa? I do. So who is, who is Dixie? Dixie is the dog. Yeah, Dixie was my little 2.2, 3.2 pound Pomeranian. You better know who Dixie is yep. when it gets to the point that I can explain to you. So who were the important people and the important routines and the important places in my life? Because knowing those are gonna help you understand me through my life. I think the biggest challenge um, in this kind of early mild is 
responding to someone who may look or sound or seem the same on the surface, but who underneath is very different. And so modifying yourself to connect to me takes a lot of you taking care of you. So whether you're doing this because it's your job, whether you're doing this because it's your, your love or both, being able to do that means you've got to take care of yourself. Otherwise, the connection doesn't happen. The connection doesn't work. So I'm going to pause at that point. Um, I'm going to look back at some of the chats and see if there's anything important that I missed and I don't, uh, how many months between, you cannot do it all by yourself. And I've got to find a better way to say this. Um, what I've said sometimes is it doesn't matter how much you love somebody. And I don't mean that because it does matter how much you love somebody, but even if you love that person to infinity, love is infinite, energy is finite. So you can run out of energy and run out of strength and run out of patience before you run out of love. But this is, go oh, but this is gonna be the part that we've gotta make sure this stays connected and this stays stays um, enough to work with. So you've got to take care of yourself to be able to do that, be able to show that love, to be able to lead with love in, instead of leading with fatigue and leading with some of the other things. So um, I will send these to Lisa. You'll have them. Um, do we have a moment for a question if somebody has one, Lisa? Of course we do. Take me, it's not going to take me 20 hours to get to where I'm going in Durham. It's only going to take me 28 minutes. So I want to congratulate the Dementia Alliance. I printed out your there, is there a problem? And I'm a retired clinical psychologist. I live where there's 850 people. 50% probably have some beginnings or endings of Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful brochure. I had to scroll down and scroll down, but I've tried to send it to other people. I really can't read well on the T on the Zoom, but that is a wonderful, wonderful brochure, and you all to, are to be congratulated for it. And I'm sure thank it took you, a lot of work. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for saying that. Um, I'd be happy to send that to everyone when we send the follow-up email. I'll send a copy of that. Um, it does talk about sort of warning signs and, and all kinds of things. So yeah. I'll definitely send that. Thank you, Pat. Anybody else have any questions for Melanie? Melanie, I'd like to get a hold of you for a symposium at Carolina Meadows next year. Can you give me your email? Um, I will have, yeah, I'll have Lisa, Lisa has your email, so I'll have Lisa connect us. Okay, I really appreciate that. Thank okay. you. That would be a lot of fun. I, I probably will run into some friends at Carolina Meadows. <laughs> Hopefully not everyone here has Alzheimer's. Well, no, I, think so. I, I think there's some, um, some nursing faculty who oh, live yeah. there. Oh yeah, there's one right down the hall from me. Yeah, the School of Nursing at UNC and at Duke. I think there's some faculty members who do not have dementia. No, no. Melanie? Can you... Go ahead, Linda. Okay. Um, a year later than I had planned, we we're actually getting a caregiver support group off the ground at First United Methodist Church in Cary. Oh, wonderful. It's going, to, it's going to be open to the community, but we're going to do, we want to do a kickoff. I think we're looking towards uh, January. I also would like your information because we'd like to have you be a keynote speaker at that first meeting. And I'm consulting with St. Matthew's Church in Hillsboro, which has started a very small group, but those people are speaking up. Well, anybody that would like to reach out and connect with Melanie, 
mm -hmm. or anybody that has any questions after the event you know sometimes you sort of process everything and then later on you have a question please feel free to email me lisa at dementia alliance i'm the one that sent you the invitation email and i'm also the one that will send you the follow-up email with the recording link okay. so please feel free to reply back to either of those emails with any questions comments anything at all and um, melanie and i email almost every day so we will definitely uh, make sure that you are taken care of we appreciate everyone so much for joining us today we uh, quickly want to thank our sponsors again esi aware senior care and capital financial solutions and of course thank you so much to you melanie we really appreciate your time and your expertise if you haven't already signed up for the next session of this series you still can do that the next date will be September 22nd. So we do have a couple of weeks in between for you to gather up your questions and feel free to email those ahead of time if you'd like. But we, the next session will be Wednesday, September 22nd, and then the 29th. So we do hope that you will join us for those if you haven't already registered. Thank you all for spending your morning or afternoon with us. We really appreciate it. And, and Melanie, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye.